in before curfew. Introducing first, from Burlington, Ontario, weighing 235 pounds, Joe Marcus. His opponent, from Moncton, New Brunswick, weighing 225 pounds, Terry Kay. Terry Kay is accompanied in the ring by his brother, Professor Rudy Kay. The referee, Terry Yorkston. Here are the Kay brothers, although only one will be fighting. That's Terry Kay with the now called the Professor staying in the corner to give him what he hopes to be some good advice. Going against Joe Marcus, the pride of Burlington. I should say half of the Marcus brothers who are both the pride of Burlington. And I'd like to say hello to those people from Burlington that we hear from by mail here on Maple Leaf Wrestling. Nice to hear from you out there. You boys threatening Terry Kay in the corner right now. And he gets up on the second rope. There's an old Scots expression. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. Yes. And there's an example of it. Woo. Well, Ali, uh, get reacquainted in the middle of the ring, uh, Billy. Acquaint the listeners um, and viewers with uh, some of the upcoming matches that they can expect to see in their area. I'd like to remind all our fans in the Brantford area that Maple Leaf Wrestling returns to the Brantford Civic Center tomorrow night at 8 p.m. featuring all the stars of Maple Leaf Wrestling. But tomorrow afternoon at 1.30 in Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens, promoter Jack Tunney presents the card that everyone is talking about. You'll see Kurt Von Hess, Joe Marcus, Nick DiCarlo, Bobby Bass, in tag action, the K Brothers, Rudy and Terry, take on yours truly and Johnny Buzzsaw Weaver. Heartthrob Buddy Hart goes up against J.J. Dillon. In a North American title match, Leo Burke, the champion, puts his title on the line against Vinny Valentino. In tag action, Handsome Jimmy and Dusty Rhodes go against the Assassins, number one and number two, who will be accompanied by their manager, Paul Jones. And finally, a world heavyweight title match inside of a 10-foot steel cage, and there must be a winner in this one. The champion, Rick Nature Boy Flair, takes on Harley Race. Now remember, this great card all takes place tomorrow afternoon, 1.30, in Toronto's Maple Leaf Gardens. Joe Marcus has been working on uh, Terry Kay with that uh, head scissors and was doing very well. And Car Terry Kay on the blind side of the uh, referee, Terry Yorkston, uh, was using the trunks for added leverage and now has got the upper hand. But uh, Joe Marcus used that uh, head scissors very, very well. Oh, yes. The Marcus brothers, they, uh, they know a lot of uh, the more scientific moves of wrestling. They're, they're not the type that rely on the knockdown, drag them out, the eye gouging, the hair pulling. They'd rather wrestle within the rule book, and which they have to be commended for that. You know, Mike, uh, the match we just saw prior to this uh, between Rowdy Roddy Piper and Greg Valentine for the U.S. title, I uh, mentioned at the opening of today's card that it, it would have quite an outcome. Well, it certainly did. And we saw Orton and Slater uh, jump in the ring, and uh, they both jumped Valentine, of all things. You know, so these fellas, they don't care. Uh, you know, there's nothing sacred with them. They jump Valentine, but the good news is I've just been informed that next week, right here on Maple Leaf Wrestling, we're going to have another U.S. title uh, match. Only this time, it'll be Greg Valentine going against Dick Slater. So that's, uh, that's, that's good news. Gangbusters. It certainly will be. Well, meanwhile, Terry Kay has been uh, really delivering some punishment to Joe Marcus, but he's proving he's got some pepper left because I think that uh, Terry Kay with some somewhat questionable shots really got Joe Marcus dander up. He is some hot. Look at this. And bailing on him, the first thing it was, I think, was the closed fist to the fist, I should say, to the forehead. And now Joe Marcus is being... Uh, well, I was just going to say, oh. uh, Joe shouldn't be making that kind of mistake, turning his back on a fellow like Terry Kay, even though he knows uh, the professor, or who they refer to him as the professor, is on the outside. And uh, here we see Terry Kay going for the pin. 
And just like that, he goes one fall up. Well, this is a duration match, and uh, one might say without the uh, assistance of the so-called professor. Uh, who well, look at here, look at here. See now, while and the fight isn't even. Uh, while Rudy K, the the so-called professor, has Terry Yorkson distracted over in the corner, complaining about something. Probably he, we saw Terry K go to work on Joe Marcus there while it's supposed to. Uh, between uh, falls, I should say, when their fall is taken, you're supposed to step back and uh, give your opponent uh, the rest period, which is required. However, Terry K moves right back in and a hard driving slam. Now rolls Joe Marcus over, oh. and he's going to go to work on that back once more, uh, Mike. And uh, it seems to me that uh, that's beginning to pay off for him and uh, really uh, get Joe Marcus uh, tired out pretty bad those blows to the back like that Joe Marcus vainly trying to fight back but as you said the uh, K brothers and uh, this is Terry of course uh, working on Joe Marcus very oh. clever there's a fellow using the old bean coming off those ropes he might have been in some trouble but he used that uh, split second to deliver a powerful punishing kick to Terry K and look at this yes Into the turnbuckle down he goes Joe Marcus going to work here, Billy. Yes, young Joe has recuperated. A lot of fire left in him. Throws Terry into that rope once again and clotheslines him coming off. Ooh. Both of them. Well, I, I think that hurt Joe just as much as it did Kay. However, he goes for the pin and uh, about two and three quarters, and the foot got onto that bottom rope just in the nick of time. <laughs> Joe pulls it back Joe in. Joe doesn't and like that. No. Oh. Well, what do they say? If you can't counter, uh, if you can't think of anything else, go for that rope, whether it's the bottom one, the top one, or whatever, but get to the ropes. And a good backdrop by Joe Marcus. Now, goes for the pin once again. Two count. And uh, once again. I thought it was a two and a half if I had uh, saw one. Yes, I was going to say that that leg of Kay's, it, it looked like it grew about four inches there, reaching for that rope. Joe Marcus. Fighting back. Uh-oh. Well, what do they say? You go to the well once too often. Well, there's only a minute left in this match. In fact, there's a little left, less than a minute left uh, in the match to, uh, to curfew. And right now, Terry Kay is in the driver's seat. He's one fall up, and Joe Marcus not in too good a shape right now. Joe is uh, going to get some brutal treatment here with the boot. He's already taken a se severe blow to the throat by Terry Kay, and uh, I think that boot and everything else is uh, wearing Joe Marcus down. I don't want to write him off before the fight is oh, over, but... Uh, reverse neck breaker by Terry Kay, and he goes for another pin. One, a two, and out he comes. All right. Joe Marcus still alive, but time is his enemy now, more yes. than anything else. Time is quickly running out. <laughs> Kay goes for that... Reverse neck breaker once again, and Joe was able to hang out of the ropes, but time has run out, Mike. Yeah, this the, one's all over. The curfew's over there. We'll have to get the the call here from Terry Yorkston, and we'll get the uh, official results here in a moment from Norm Kimber. This is curfew and the end of the match. The winner with the only fall, Terry Kaye.